Monday morning. I hope that this is a really lovely way for us to start the week together, actually. Um, I'm really keen for this to be an interactive session. So I've got some things to share with you, but I also would hope that we can do some mindfulness practice together, chat with each other, share with each other. So really lovely to see all of the comments coming in on the chat box about where you're joining from, from everywhere from Bournemouth, Wales, Dorset, Worcestershire, Wallington. Wow, Cumbria, great to see such a range of um, locations of people joining us. Um, so I want to um, tell you a little bit more about what we're going to do today and learn a little bit more about you. But I thought what better way to start a mindfulness session than with a little bit of mindfulness. Now, I'm really aware that um, some of you might have experienced mindfulness before and some of you might be coming to this completely new and that's totally okay um, but what we're going to do is just for a minute or two just to kind of arrive in the space the online space uh, that we have together today um, just to kind of settle in so to say um, we're just going to practice for for a few minutes just um, a kind of guided breathing exercise so if you're in a comfortable position to do so I'll invite you to kind of just turn your attention inward so whatever that means to you it might mean kind of gently closing your eyes or it might mean just kind of softening your gaze away from the screen for a minute or two um, knowing that um, in this next period you don't need to pay attention to anything on the screen but just listening to my voice and turning your attention more to your your inner world and if you feel like you would like to turn off the video during this part you'll feel free to turn your video on and off throughout so just to start with I'll invite you to just notice your breath so Notice the way your breath is flowing in and out of your body. And if it feels okay to do so, I'd invite you to just deepen your breath very slightly. Just try and feel your lungs a little bit. Notice the air flowing in and flowing out of your body. And then from your breath, just widen your attention slightly to your body as a whole. Just notice how you're sitting, how you're feeling in this moment. Do you feel any tensions, any points of relaxation in your body? If it helps, you can just kind of briefly scan through your body from your, the top of your head, down through your face, shoulders arms, torso, legs, just, just checking in, just again, just noticing, not needing to make any, any judgments or anything right or wrong, but just being aware of how you're arriving in this space today. And if your attention drifts off, that's completely normal and nothing to worry about. You can always just bring your attention back when you notice to your breath into your body and then I'm just going to invite you to briefly reflect whether you have an intention for being here together in this group today it might be to seek out more relaxation more calm it might be to learn it might be to connect again there's no right or wrong answer but just looking inside yourself and noticing what's your intention in being in this space Maybe just saying, if you can kind of focus your attention down to a word or a few words, just, just saying those words in your mind. And if nothing comes really easily, that's also totally okay. Just an invitation. And you might feel yourself slightly distracted by noise or things around you. Again, that's all okay. Just bringing your attention back again your breath, to your body, to your intention if you have one. And knowing that you're, you're not alone in this practice, on this meeting today, that we've all come here together to learn and share and connect with each other.
And then with a few kind of final quiet breaths, I'll invite you to just prepare to join back into the collective space. So just becoming aware of your body again, your breath, maybe taking one last deep breath. And then just, if your eyes have been closed, opening your eyes or raising your view to the screen again. Thank you for joining me in that. And especially thank you if you're new to mindfulness. Um, and if you feel like you want to do a little stretch or, or just get yourself comfortable again for some um, more, more listening and interaction, that's totally fine. It's, um, it's uh, really lovely to see some of your faces and we're going to stop the mindfulness practice for now. So if you want to turn your video back on, you're very welcome to. Um, so as Jana kindly introduced me. I'm the communications manager at the Network of Wellbeing. I'm also, I've been practicing mindfulness for about seven years and teaching for a few years. And I really have noticed in myself and in others around me how much difference it can make to stress and overwhelm. But I also know that when you're stressed and overwhelmed, it can be a really challenging thing to encourage yourself to do. So today is an opportunity to look together at some techniques that can kind of help you when you are in that place of stress and overwhelm, what can kind of help you to engage with kind of a mindfulness as, as a tool for your own self care. Um, and I'm a really big believer that it's, it's in, that you can't pour from an empty cup and that it's really important to take care of yourself actually if you want to effectively and sustainably care for others in your family, in your community um, and in the wider world, which I, I think both sides of are very important and, and they feed into each other. So, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna share a very brief um, poll question or two, actually two questions with you guys, just to learn a little bit about you, you all and um, what experience you have with mindfulness and how, so the questions are, do you have any experience with mindfulness? Um, and how stressed or overwhelmed are you feeling right now on a scale of one to five? So it's just really helpful to kind of get a sense of where you guys are at and where you're, you're joining from so that I can make sure that this is as, as useful for you all as possible. So I'll give you uh, another five, five or 10 seconds just to um, fill in that poll. So hopefully you can all see it on your screen. So either you have a lot of experience or none at all and either or, or somewhere in between um, wherever you sit on that scale don't worry at all this is going to be very accessible how to event um, and again however stressed or overwhelmed you're feeling your, all your feelings are, are welcome of course this is one um, we're going to share some techniques today and um, in terms of helping support yourself and also it's really important to look for other ways to support um, get support in your life as well so I'm going to end the poll now and share the results with you guys um, so in terms of experience with mindfulness about half of you have some experience with mindfulness um, and just under half have only a very little bit um, so and then a few experienced people and a few with uh, no experience at all. Um, like I say, you're all very welcome. Um, and then in terms of stress levels, the most common answer was just under half three, three on a scale of one to five. So about that middle point of feeling quite stressed. Actually, that's, you know, I would say, um, and again, wherever you feel like you are on this scale, you're very welcome. Um, in terms of kind of self care, it's really helpful to build up practices so that when you notice you're getting to those levels of, oh, I am really stressed and overwhelmed, or I feel myself getting towards that, that's the, you know, before you slip over into um, perhaps crisis mode, which happens to all of us at different points, but it can be helpful to have a regular mindfulness practice and other self care techniques to help identify those points before they get to crisis. Um, so hopefully some of the um, tools that we're going to share today will help you a little bit with that. Um, so I wanted, like I mentioned, I want this event to be really interactive and because we're quite a big group, we don't um, have the opportunity to check in with 
each each person individually as much as I'd love to. I love it when you sit in a um, kind of circle with each other and have the chance to hear from everyone. But I want to give a bit of that feeling. So what we're going to do is split into um, breakout rooms um, just to check in with each other, just so that we know this isn't a one way event. This is a kind of interactive how to. Um, and what we're going to do is um, just be in a groups of, of between three and five I think it will be um, and we're just going to share I'm going to put in the chat box what you're going to share with each other just so you know um, we're going to share our name yeah there you go um, our name um, our experience with mindfulness briefly and how you're feeling or arriving in this space and how you'd summarize this in one word. So when you're sharing with each other, you don't have to say one word, but what I'd like to invite you to do is when you bring, um, I'd love to hear a bit of a flavor back from the breakout rooms in the main space. So maybe if um, everyone in the group has like condenses how they're doing into one word and then one person in the group takes responsibility for just writing a list of those words that so might be relaxed, tired, um, so one person is relaxed, one person is tired, one person is stressed, one person's happy. One, per uh, one person in the group just write that list of three, three to five words without any names. Um, I'm just going to write those instructions so that, um, uh, so that then you can share that back in the group in the chat box when we come back. I hope that makes sense. It was a bit of a convoluted description, but basically the main, the main point is that you get the chance to introduce yourselves to each other um, uh, in terms of your name, your experience with mindfulness and how you're feeling. If you remember, great if you have like one word from each person, someone makes that into a list and you can share it in the chat when, um, when you come back from the breakout rooms. Um, so I'm going to ask Jana um, to split you into breakout rooms and then uh, we'll, we'll be about just under 10 minutes probably in the breakout rooms and I'll give, we'll give you a warning when you're about to come back. 100% clear, but hopefully we'll, we'll do a little experiment now to see how much it was clear. Um, I'm going to share um, four words um, that came up in my group from each of the four uh, people in the chat box now, just so that you get a sense of... Um, what we discussed and if anyone else managed to either get four words or would like to share any brief snippets from your check-in just to kind of give a sense to the main room that would be very welcome so in my uh, check-in group we had the words relieved hopeful surviving and grateful so you see um i really was uh Great, yeah, I, you can tell which one I was. <laughs> I was really grateful for the um, open honesty in uh, my checking group, uh, and I really hope that you guys experience the same. I can see Katie saying, this is great, I feel a bit better for doing this. Great, that's good to hear. No worries that you didn't do the worst thing, Anthea. Rushed and overwhelmed, Lena, completely understandable. Overwhelmed, tired, interested, bereaved. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, Self-help, re resilient survival. Brilliant, brilliant to um, hear all of these uh, summaries just to get a snippet from how you guys are arriving and just to say however you're arriving in the space it's all completely welcome um, and I look forward to spending the next hour with you guys. So I'm now going to move on to sharing um, a presentation um, with you guys so I'm going to share my screen and hopefully it will all work out to share with you guys. Oh, sorry, give me a moment. Oh, like uh, Jana said about technical. Um, so can everyone see that okay? Yes. Yeah, great. Perfect. Okay, so um, we're gonna, I'm gonna do, give you guys a presentation for 15 or 20 minutes or so, but it will involve kind of interaction and practice. And then um, after the presentation, I want to have, give us a chance again to connect with each other and practice some more, um, both alone and, and together in groups. So that's just a bit of an idea about what we're going to be doing um, for this period. Um, so like I've said, like really getting to know each other, learning simple techniques, um, really kind of 
exploring particularly how mindfulness can help with this topic of stress and overwhelm that's brought us together and that many of you are experiencing, um, but also bringing in the importance of kind of kindness, compassion, community. Um, and like I've said, I, I think this should be kind of interactive and I hope that you guys can kind of comment and engage throughout. Um, so this picture is actually me kind of surrounded by um, toys at home uh, from my daughter. I've got a one and a half year old daughter and it, I, I mean I kind of included it because it's a bit of a show of how I often practice mindfulness myself actually um, and that it, it doesn't mean mindfulness to me doesn't mean that you like remove all the stress um, and challenges of life um, but it's more like being able to find a place of calm for yourself within the stress and the challenges of life so that you're able to to weather the storm um, more effectively and with more kind of care and compassion for yourself um, so I'm just going to tell in terms of getting to know each other I'm just going to tell a little bit more about um, my organization and me briefly before we go into some um, more mindfulness uh, lessons and techniques so like was mentioned by Jana, I work for a project called the Network of Wellbeing, which is really um, about connecting, supporting and empowering those that care about wellbeing of people and planet across the UK. So we're a network of um, people. We run um, online and, and uh, offline when, when that's possible events. Um, and I'll tell you guys some more about those at the end and you'll be welcome to join. And we also have um, community projects. So our main office is based in Totnes in Devon and we have um, a project called the Share Shed which is a library of things. It's actually just um, the picture in the bottom left is a, a van because it's just become a mobile share shed so it's a, a library where people can share rather than needing to consume because from the network of wellbeing's perspective we see wellbeing as like quite a radical concept in a way that you don't need actually so much stuff um, you don't need to consume so much in order to have happiness and well-being that actually there's a lot of research now to show that of course you need your basic needs met but beyond basic needs um, often the things that contribute more to our well-being are things like connection having enough time um, you know take thing having ways to kind of really take care of, of ourselves so and do the things that we care about and are passionate about so um, that's a lot around the type of well-being that we talk about. So well-being for, for ourselves in connection with community, with nature and with society. Um, and the bottom right picture is just we have a small um, little retreat venue in Devon as well called Eden Rise, which um, is reopening in July and we hold events there sometimes too. So that's just a little bit about the network well-being. A little bit about me. Um, like I mentioned, I have a one and a half year old daughter called Lily. Um, I actually live in the Netherlands, um, which is a kind of uh, funny story, but it has meant that during lockdown, um, I was always working from home. So I'm from the UK, um, but live in the Netherlands. So I've always been working from home for the network of wellbeing on the communications. So in that way, things weren't very different for me, but in a lot of other ways, particularly in relation to uh, my daughter and childcare and having support around, it has been very different. Um, and of course, um, as many of you all know that our parents um, on this meeting, it can be really beautiful um, to have a child and you get lots of uh, moments of connection and care and fun. Um, and it can also be somewhat stressful. <laughs> so this is a picture of um, my partner and me and my daughter um, a few weeks into lockdown <laughs> when the daycares were closed and we hadn't been out of the house for a long time and of course this is a little bit of a jokey picture but it kind of communicates the point that it was just getting a bit much for all of us and um, I think um, a lot of parents and a lot of people generally have been in this situation where um, and I, I'm you know sharing this picture in a somewhat light-hearted way but I don't want to make light of it that it has been a stressful time that a lot has been expected of people um, a lot of the usual support systems have been taken away and therefore it's really important to find ways to kind of acknowledge that um, not shy away from it but then to kind of find new ways to, to care for yourself to care for each other um, within that challenge um, so that brings us on to mindfulness. Um, so we've talked a lot about mindfulness and I know some of you are, are more experienced than others. Like I said, everyone is completely welcome. Um, but I just wanted to share a little bit about 
what mindfulness is. Um, so this definition is from um, John Kabat-Zinn, who was the original creator of the mindfulness-based stress reduction eight-week program, which is one of the most common um, approaches kind of in Western me methodology of mindfulness. Um, and he says that uh, mindfulness is awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So it's, it's a very simple practice at its core, actually, mindfulness. But it's just because it's simple, it, it doesn't mean that it's easy. And it, it really is a practice. So it's not, it's not something, I think often we think once we understand something intellectually, then we've got it or our mind can trick us to think that. But it's really something that, that comes through um, dedicating time like any other skill, really. Um, but what we're here to do today is talk about responding to stress and overwhelm with simple mindfulness techniques. So I really wanted to emphasize that I think I, I do have a kind of morning practice, although it's a bit chaotic with my daughter. I, I do try to have a morning sitting practice, but I also am a really big fan of, of practicing kind of small moments of mindfulness throughout your day. And I think, like I mentioned earlier, when you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, it's, it's kind of the last thing that you think to do to like carve out 15 minutes or whatever in the morning to, to sit in mindfulness practice because you've got a lot of demands and that's probably why you're stressed and you feel like you haven't got enough time. Um, so in those times, it can be really, really helpful to just see mindfulness as something that's accessible that you can access through your day to day life. Um, so I'm just going to touch on a few um, practices that help me. Then we're going to kind of do, dip in a, to practicing those together a little bit. Um, and I, you know, I'd love if you guys want to share responses or, or questions or things in the chat that have helped you. That's also very welcome. Um, so one thing that is kind of a mainstay of my own practice is just counting my breaths. Um, again, it's um, it's not rocket science is very simple but it's it's such a good anchor to kind of bring you back into the moment to calm yourself down so if i'm having a particularly stressful bedtime experience or i feel like a deadline's coming at work and i'm not sure how to handle it i i can just kind of take a step back and just literally kind of breathe in and out and count one breathe in and out count two and, and do that you know up to ten or however much that I would need um, and we will practice that together a little bit in a minute um, but other things you can do you can kind of embed this uh, intention of paying attention so kind of noticing into your other day-to-day -day activities so for example when you're you know drinking a cup of tea um, which as a parent, I don't know, it, of course there's the joke that, you know, especially new parents, it's quite hard to get your moment to drink your hot cup of tea on your own. But if you do carve out that moment to just have a cup of tea, then really enjoying it, like really, you know, um, tuning into your senses, really like feeling the warmth of the cup, you know, smelling the tea, tasting it. It sounds it feels strange at first if you're not used to practicing and even if you are you can kind of forget it but if you can just give yourself those moments throughout the day where you just tune in to being in the here and now it's actually really calming for your nervous system and when you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed that's really what you need you need that kind of calm for your nervous system it's giving your mind a simple task so that your that your system can calm down um, other things you can do are simple uh, mindful movements. So, for example, even we often carry a lot of stress in our shoulders. Even if you feel yourself getting very stressed, just like rolling your shoulders, just knowing that in that moment you're just giving yourself a moment of self care and doing small and regular um, can actually be more effective when you're feeling quite stressed than adding mindfulness to your to do list, I think. Um, so, um, with that in mind, let's now just have a very short um, pause for a practice for less than a minute. We're just going to, again, turn our attention slightly inwards like we did at the start. If you would feel comfortable closing your eyes or just lowering your gaze. And just for a few breaths, actually just for three breaths, we're just going to breathe deeply in and out together. So, I'll invite you now to breathe deeply in. Really feel your lungs and then just release 
one breathing out. And then again, breathing really deeply in. And then holding maybe for a second and then releasing everything on the out breath. And then one final time for this mini practice, breathing really deeply in. The deepest breath you've taken so far. And then releasing everything out. And just, you know, bringing your attention back to our collective space. That was a very, obviously a very snippet of a practice, but just taking a second to notice, do you feel any different? It, because part of encouraging yourself to remember to practice is noticing, does this have any impact on me? How am I feeling before and how am I feeling afterwards? So just checking in with yourself. How are you feeling now in comparison to just a minute ago and to the start of this event? And of course, we're not expecting miracles. Many of you may um, check in with yourself and feel that you're actually still feeling quite stressed and tense. That's totally okay. Um, I would say that mindfulness is not about running away from the stress and overwhelm, but more becoming conscious of it. I mean, perhaps you guys have heard that kind of saying that the way out is through. Um, and unfortunately, it can feel when we're stressed and overwhelmed that we our fight or flight um, reaction kicks in and we can kind of just want to run um, or fight and we, we get a lot of cortisol in our system. Um, but actually, through mindfulness, you're calming down your system, like I said, and just giving yourself the space to realize, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm stressed, I'm overwhelmed. And actually, you realize that through that acceptance, you, you somewhat lessen the intensity of the experience. Um, but it's not about denying your experience, and I think that's important. Um, this uh, invitation is, again, a very brief uh, practice that you can do. This is from um, an organisation called Action for Happiness, um, which is just about encouraging your... Again, mindfulness is about kind of training your, your mind in a way, and often we can be very focused on the challenges and the negative. And like I say, I, don't, I think it's important to acknowledge when we are under stress and when there are genuine challenges. So I definitely am not encouraging people to ignore or repress stress. But also we can look alongside the stress um, that there are moments, things of, of beauty, things to be grateful for. Um, and again, um, some of you might know that you know there's a lot of research done on the benefits of gratitude and, and you know it's a common uh, practice to make a daily gratitude list and I know this and I always kind of forget to make my daily list and so actually what can help you is, is just having just when you remember just to have like a pause and even noticing one thing that's beautiful around you or that you're feeling grateful for can really be a kind of counteraction to your, the, the kind of negative um, cycle of thoughts that can flow when you're feeling in a stress um, state of mind. Um, so I'm just going to introduce a few more um, in-depth in techniques, let's say. So I've talked a bit about kind of moment-to-moment -moment techniques that you could use um, when you experience a moment of stress or overwhelm um, that can be done quite briefly. Um, I think if you have a little bit um, more time or you want to kind of go into a little bit more depth, that um, some of these tools can be uh, useful. So one is um, self-compassion, practicing self-compassion. So some of you might have heard of Kristen Neff, who's a, a US academic who has done a lot of research and work on self-compassion and its benefits. And she talks about mindfulness as being in a way like the first step, the ground upon which you build this self-compassion um, in relation to, often in relation to when you're having a challenging moment. So when you, when you experience a moment of challenge, you, you can um, almost treat it with mindfulness. You can um, be with it and, and slow down, tune into your breath, tune into your body, into your feelings, and realize I am having a moment of challenge or suffering right now. And then from there, you can acknowledge that we have a kind of common humanity in this, especially at the moment when, of course, in different ways, all of us have been impacted by Corona and the lockdown. Um, that 
yeah, there's a kind of common humanity. It's, it's okay that I'm feeling this way. I'm not alone. It, it's natural that I'm struggling at the moment. Other people are also struggling and kind of combining that with a, a sense of self kindness. So really trying to become conscious of your inner dialogue and, and, and giving yourself some words of kindness consciously. Um, and, and Christian Neff says it as kind of treating yourself as a, as a good friend. So I'd really recommend um, her work and I can actually, I know Jana's going to send a follow up email so I can include a link to her work in the follow up email. Um, and this is just a few examples. Um, of kind of changing that inner dialogue taken from um hey amber ray on instagram um but i just thought this oh sorry went through ooh. okay we're back <laughs> um it's just a few examples of um how you can change that in a in a dialogue so for example you make a mistake and we all have that kind of inner critical voice that's like what's wrong with you how could you have done this why has this happened like immediately going to the negative um if you can take a moment to practice mindfulness be with that moment of suffering realize okay like i i made a mistake this is difficult um but actually that's really common for people to make mistakes that's so human um and actually what did I learn from this? How can I be kind to myself in response? So it's just about, again, like in combination with mindfulness, finding those ways for kind of roots to self-compassion and kindness. Um, another technique um, that I wanted to share with you, and this is the last kind of set technique that I'll share with you um, today, um, but the, and then we'll go on to kind of practicing and more discussion. Um, but is this uh, rain technique, which some of you may have heard of from Tara Brack. So it's rain because uh, it's an acronym, uh, recognize, allow, investigate and nurture. And again, this is a technique that can be used in response to a challenging moment. So when you experience um, stress and overwhelm, you can actually, it's very powerful to simply recognize and mindfulness is one, one tool to help you do that recognize what's happening uh, wow okay i need, i'm i'm really feeling overwhelmed right at this moment and then allow it to be just as it is so without being like oh i shouldn't be overwhelmed oh why has this happened to me again just trying to practice okay okay i really feel that i am overwhelmed just like breathing into that allowing it accepting it as as a part of your experience in your reality and then gently investigating it. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling this way. What's, what's going on? What's behind it? Um, what does it feel like? Even what does it feel like in my body? What thoughts are arising? Um, but be, being gentle and a kind of curious with yourself and really remembering to bring in that, kind, that self-kindness or the nurturing as it's called in RAIN. So being not trying to kind of challenge gently challenge that self-critic that comes up and just be kind of more nurturing and kind to yourself and again i'd really emphasize that these things are practices so i wanted to share a few different approaches with you guys today as a kind of flavor but of course some things will really resonate with you and some things won't so if you really resonated with the few short breaths but not so much with this or vice versa that's totally okay it's about what what works for you and finding the techniques that can help support you in your own context and situation. Um, and I just want to kind of move towards closing this presentation by really emphasizing the value of connecting with each other. I think often mindfulness can be portrayed as a kind of individual practice which to some extent it is it's about tuning in with your inner world but for me the the real joy the the benefit of that comes in in my connection with others so being able to share from from a more genuine place with others being able to be more consciously present more mindfully consciously present with my loved ones with other people in my life um, and just being able to connect from a more mindful place is um, so valuable um, and also this sense of kindness that can come from mindfulness. So 
to yourself, which is vital, and also to others in the world. So if you can find ways to really care for yourself in those moments of stress and overwhelm, then, then you find ways to respond more gently and kindly to, to others around you and feel more inspired to do the work that you want to do in the world, which I, I imagine, you know, given that we're on an Eden Project Community School, that a lot of you are involved in kind of community engagement, activism of some kind. I really see there's an interrelationship between the way that you care for your inner world and the kind of quality of presence and kindness that you can offer um, to those people that you're trying to help in, in the community activism work that you do. Um, so I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen there. Um, oh, I see um, I haven't been able to keep a close eye on the um, chat box throughout this, but um, feel free to share any kind of comments or questions or suggestions in the chat box if you would like to. Um, but what I uh, am going to move on to now is just uh, doing a brief um practice again actually and then um maybe after the practice we can if there are any specific um questions i can address them then so feel free to pop them in the chat box now or um just relax and do that after the um after the practice and i will try and address any questions and then i'd love to have time for us to go and in, again into breakout rooms like we did at the start because like i mentioned i really think a lot of the benefit can come from sharing, listening, connecting to each other um, about these topics. So um, if you guys are all open to it, I'm going to invite us to do a slightly longer practice than our short breaths. Um, and we're going to practice the uh, RAIN meditation that I introduced in the PowerPoint. So um, I'm going to invite you to um, reflect on a challenge, uh, perhaps a stress or an overwhelming moment that you've had in your life. I'm just going to say, maybe don't um, feel the need to focus on your most extreme stress or challenge. Um, maybe it just because we're in a kind of group practice space, if it was on a scale of one to 10 of like one being not very challenging at all and 10 being the biggest trauma in your life, maybe go for it, you know, a three or so, just something that it's quite stressful for you at the moment, but um, and you'd like to work with, um, just just kind of see if you can bring something to mind that you'd like to work with in this practice. And like I say, see see if it resonates with you. Like, don't feel the need to have any kind of particular experience, but just see the next five minutes as a as a chance to try something out. So, again, I'm going to invite you to just get comfortable. And um, again, just turning your attention gently inwards. And I think for this meditation, as you get comfortable and perhaps you want to close your eyes, um, I'm just going to ring us a, a bell at the start and the end of the meditation, just so that you know once it's started and once it's ended. So just getting comfortable, closing your eyes if you'd like to and listening to a sound of the bell. So to start with, again, just tuning into your breath. Again, noticing its flow in and out of your body. And no need to change the way you're breathing right at this moment, but just simply noticing. How are you breathing naturally? Are you breathing in through your nose or through your mouth? Where do you feel the air coming into your body, in your chest, in your stomach? Are you breathing deep and slow or short and shallow? Again, there's no right or wrong answers, but it's just taking that time to notice. Notice what your body is doing naturally in this moment. And then just 
widening your attention to your body as a whole. Again, just checking in, maybe making sure that you're comfortable. Coming back to your breath again. If it helps you, you can just label your breaths in and out for a few breaths, just to tune in, just to kind of bring your mind into the moment. And know that your breath is here always as an anchor for you in the practice. And then I'm going to invite you to just bring to mind a challenge that you've had recently. Something that's causing you some, some stress and some overwhelm. Just kind of drawing that challenge to mind. And noticing whether that changes any feelings in your body, any, any sensations in your breath, just by bringing that challenge to mind. And just try and sit with that for a few breaths, not pushing it away, not making it wrong, but just recognizing that that's there. That is actually a challenge for you. And just seeing if you can, if you can gently with your breath, be, be soft with yourself and just allow that challenge to, to be there. So see it, recognize it, and just see if you can allow it to be not immediately needing to change it, but just seeing it as part of your current experience. And again, just tuning in to your breath and your body, seeing how you feel in this moment, reflecting on this challenge. See if you can gently look a little bit deeper into your response, into the challenge itself and just investigate what this challenge is, is doing to you, how it's making you feel, what might be behind it. And if you feel lost at any point, you can simply come back to your breath in and out and just know it's okay if it's challenging it's not easy to experience stress and overwhelm it's not easy to explore why that might be happening to you but just know that you're you're taking the time to do this as a way to be kind to yourself to to nurture yourself, to be gentle. See if you can investigate without any sense of judgment of being wrong or see if you can try and replace your criticism with maybe just one or two words of kindness. Sometimes it doesn't come naturally or easy to us to be kind to ourselves, but see if you can just, even if it's just to offer yourself some strength in dealing with this challenge or this stress. Even if it's just a very simple phrase like, I'm okay. I'm doing the best I can. And just breathing into those words, whatever words of nurturing self-kindness make most sense to you. Try and repeat them in your mind and see if you can just breathe with them. I'm okay. Just seeing if that changes anything with your breath, with your body.
And then just tuning in again to your breath flowing in and flowing out. And tuning in again to your body as a whole, perhaps noticing any sounds around you, preparing gently to come back to our shared space, but just knowing that you've got a few more breaths to quietly reflect and quietly nurture yourself before you hear the sound of the bell to bring us back to our shared space. Thank you guys for experimenting together with that practice. Like I mentioned, different practices will resonate for you. So don't um, feel that, yeah, you need to get every practice or, or fall deeply into it. Um, but just take what, what works for you, what, what resonates for you particularly at this moment. Um, so I think that, um, I just want to check in um, with uh, your guys' questions. Can we get a copy of the slides to reflect in our own time? Of course you can, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, scanning through. I don't know, Jana, whether you've seen any particular questions or if anyone's got any particular questions you want to ask, um, feel free to put them in the chat box now. Um, and I'm just going to introduce uh, the next um, kind of breakout uh, connection exercise um, whilst I leave the chat box kind of open if anyone wants to ask anything. Um, so I mentioned in my presentation about the power of connection and the power of listening to each other and just being there with each other um, and for me this has been one of the most powerful aspects of, of learning about mindfulness actually having the um, the mindful listening um, practice. Um, yeah, I, I feel a, a mildly distracted by the chat because I want to make sure to be present with you guys all and um, with things you're sharing. So I will read through that whilst you're in the breakout rooms and then afterwards we can um, share more on that. Um, but in terms of the um, breakout room discussion, we're going to split into again small groups of um, uh, around four people and I'm going to invite you to just share a little bit with each other about how how those experiences were for you in, of mindfulness um, and yeah and a bit more about how you're how you're doing in this moment and I'd like to invite us to just listen to each other in a kind of mindful way so this might be that um, often I think when we're listening to each other our own minds are quite busy thinking of what we want to share or what we're going to say or or maybe we need to fix what someone's sharing but just practicing being present with um with what people are sharing is a really um powerful practice and it's actually there can be this can be quite uh, an in-depth practice which I'll um share a little bit more about at the end because the network of well-being has started running kind of uh, listening spaces in partnership with another organization called the heart movement so if you are keen to learn more about this particular aspect of mindfulness um i did yeah i'll invite you to join us there because that will be more in depth like looking at how to create a good holding space in this uh, exercise we're just going to have a short taste of um of listening to each other okay thanks claire um so it will be um what what has your experience i'm going to write the questions in the chat so that you guys have it so what um what has your experience been of the practices in this session um because often it can be really powerful to share with each other oh that resonated with me but that didn't quite land um oh yeah sorry give me one second the other questions i uh i'd already typed out um and also how are you feeling again right now um and in general if there's anything that you you might be in a different group um than you were earlier 
Um, so just kind of sharing with each other or if there was something you wanted to mention and again feeling only sharing what you would like to share but just how are you feeling now or in general and I think because we're a little bit um, shorter on time maybe yeah maybe we'll have about 10 minutes in the in the breakout rooms and then we'll come back for the last um, 10 minutes um, together for just checking in on um, any questions you might have and ways to stay in touch and engaged but um, yeah I'll invite um, Jana to split you into those breaks. Yeah body language or things like that so I think Flo that should be everyone back. Wonderful um, thank you all so much for again bravely uh, connecting with each other because I think that it's a uh, yeah, it can feel uh, a little bit kind of challenging or edgy sometimes, but also so nourishing and, and beautiful if you really kind of connect with your authentic self, at least that's my uh, experience often. Um, so I had a lovely chat with Ingrid, who's commented that she loved the rain tool. Um, so thank you so much for that, Ingrid. Um, ah, and Rose had some experience difficulties getting into the breakout rooms. I hope you managed to um, have a chat somewhere, um, Rose. Um, so I wanted to um, draw to a close by, again, inviting, I'm not sure if you had any um, brief questions. I haven't seen any. I've seen like sharing of experiences and lovely to see all your comments in the chat. Um, but uh, feel free to let me know. But of course, we're running um, towards the end of our session now. So I just wanted to share um, some other ways that you guys could kind of get involved uh, and stay in touch. And um, so I'm just going to share my screen with you guys again. And I'm going to go from the end. Yeah, here we go. Um, so I just wanted to invite you all to join some of our future events at the Network of Wellbeing. Um, so we've got tomorrow evening and I'll, after I stop sharing my screen, I'll put the sign up um, link in the chat for you all. Um, we've got an event on um, compassion for now. So taking mindful approaches to our mental health and wellbeing. And that's a Network of Wellbeing webinar. So we usually have three um, presenters um, giving very short presentations of you know five to ten minutes and then yeah an opportunity for breakout rooms and discussion in a similar way that we have today but um, really looking forward to that because we've got um, two um, mindfulness teachers and one mental health um, kind of practitioner and yeah it looks like set to be a really good evening so that's a, an immediate event that you are welcome to join. Um, I mentioned um, about the listening um, spaces so um, next Tuesday evening um, we'll be hosting a listening space which is about lessons from lockdown self-care and well-being um, and that will be a chance like in a way like we did um, just now in our small groups but actually with a more held space of, of guidelines about speaking from the heart like deeply listening to each other we'll just have a space to share just um, what we found is it's really valuable to learn during this time but also just to share our experiences and to have time and space to to be heard really and um, so that's what that event is about and, and with that one I'll um, I'll give the link to Jana to include in the follow-up email as well as the um, third event that I've listed there that our kind of next webinar arts and creativity for health and well-being which will hopefully be a lovely interactive event to try out different arts drawing craft techniques but also looking at the evidence behind why those um, why those practices are so good for us. Um, and yeah, this is just uh, a few ways that you can stay in touch with me and with the Network of Wellbeing. So you can check out our website, but also do feel free to follow us on social media. Um, particularly we're active on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and always happy to respond to kind of questions or comments there if you have things um, that you'd like to connect on following this um, event. So um, I'll leave that up just for a second longer in case anyone wants to take a screenshot or anything. But um, also just to say, Jana will include all of this in the follow-up email as well. So don't feel that you have to, if you miss anything, that this is your only chance. Um, so there we go. Um, and I just wanted to um, make a quick uh, request 
uh, that I would love to take a screenshot of the event this morning just to um, share back with my network of wellbeing team, maybe put on our social media. But of course, it's um, only for people that feel comfortable. So if you don't want to be included in a screenshot, I'd invite you to turn off your camera now. And if you don't mind being included in a screenshot, you feel free to smile or wave or <laughs> look very mindful. <laughs> And then I'll just do that a few times so that I can share and then you might see it on, uh, on Twitter if you follow us there. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to hand back to, um, yeah, I, I, um, I'm going to hand back to uh, Jana and Lucy for the closing from the Eden Project team. But I'm aware that we um, ran a little bit over time and I didn't have too much time to do kind of Q&A. So like I say, feel free to contact us on social media and, and like come to those future events. And whilst I hand back to Jana, I'll um, get the link for our event tomorrow evening and then um, and put it in the chat so any of you guys